Welcome back. Today we're going to do a quick review over Unit 1 for the AP test coming up. There's basically two things that you need to worry about for Unit 1. That's the production possibility curve and comparative advantage and opportunity cost. First, let's talk about the production possibility curve. Remember, the production possibility curve is basically a graph that shows trade-offs between two alternative goods. The main goods we're usually going to have are capital goods and consumer goods. Remember, consumer goods are things that we buy, consumers, things like cars, uh, coffee, food, stuff like that. Whereas capital goods are going to be machines and things like that that businesses buy so that they can produce more stuff in the future. Factories, factory equipment, stuff like that. Remember, any point on the curve is going to represent a possible production point. So this is full employment output. This is an economy that is experiencing only the natural unemployment rate, frictional and structural, and has nothing wrong going on. It doesn't matter where on the curve it is, as long as it's touching that curve, they've got full employment output. Any dot inside the curve is going to be an economy experiencing a recession. If we're in here inside the curve, then you're in a recession. This is how much stuff you would be able to make if you were at full employment output and you were using all of your resources, namely labor. And this inside the curve, anything inside the curve is going to be a recession where we have higher unemployment than the natural rate, aka cyclical unemployment. Any point inside this curve, it doesn't matter where it is, you're in a recession. Any point outside the curve is going to be something that is not feasible. It's not possible right now. Uh, you can make, I don't know, 20 capital goods and 10 consumer goods, but we can't currently make 30 capital goods and 20 consumer goods. We just don't have that much stuff or that much manpower and workers. As the curve shifts to the left, there is a reduction in a country's production possibility curves. Now, given the same amount of resources or labor or even at the natural rate of unemployment, we can't make as much stuff as we can before. On the AP test, if you see a question where you're, you're having to reduce the production possibility curve or shift that thing to the left, it's usually going to be caused by a reduction in capital goods. Maybe there's been depreciation and the interest rate is too high and businesses are not buying capital goods at the moment. If we have fewer capital goods, we're not going to be able to make as much stuff in the future. And so if that curve is shifting to the left, what you're having is a decrease in economic growth. At the same time, the curve can also shift out to the right. An increase in the production possibility curve will cause the curve to shift outward to the right. And now, even with the same amount of people working, even with full employment or just the natural rate of unemployment, we can make even more stuff. Things that might cause this, uh, an increase in capital goods. That's the main thing you're going to see on an AP test. There's going to be an increase in capital goods and things that lead to that is a lower real interest rate. If the real interest rate is lower, businesses will be more willing to invest and spend and buy capital goods. And once those capital goods get into place in the next few years, you'll be able to produce even more stuff that's leading to economic growth. This is what economic growth looks like, and that's the main way you're going to see this on the AP test. The other thing you have to remember for Unit 1 is going to be comparative advantage, absolute advantage, opportunity costs, and trade. Let's talk about that real quick. Remember, there's two types of problems. There's input problems and output problems. An input problem, it's going to be a question telling you about how many inputs it takes each country to produce one good. So here up the top, this is an input problem. It's telling you how many hours it takes to produce a car or how many hours it takes to produce a TV. Let's do the input problem first. First, let's talk about absolute advantage. Absolute advantage is going to be the country that can just flat out make more of a product. So in an input problem, it's talking about how many hours it takes to produce a car. It's going to be the country that has the lowest amount of hours. So let's see who has the absolute advantage in producing a car. Canada takes 15 hours to produce one car. The US takes 10 hours to produce one car. That means that Canada has the absolute advantage in producing cars. Next, let's talk about comparative advantage. Comparative advantage is going to be the country that can make a product for the lowest opportunity cost. And remember, opportunity cost is what you have to give up. So it's the value of the next best thing that you could have made. So right now, we're looking at countries choosing between making cars or TVs. So every time Canada makes one car, they are giving up some amount of TV. That's their opportunity cost. Let's see who has the comparative advantage in producing those cars. Canada takes 15 hours to produce a car. They take five hours to produce a TV. This is an input problem, so the other number goes under. So to figure out the opportunity cost of making one car for Canada, we take the five hours to produce a TV and put it under uh, the 15 hours it takes to produce a car. So it looks like this, 15 divided by five, and that comes out to three. 
and that's three TVs. Every time Canada produces one car in that same amount of time, they could have made three TVs. Now we got to see the United States opportunity cost to see who has a comparative advantage. The U.S. takes 10 hours to produce a car. They take 20 hours to produce a TV. This is an input prop again, so the other number goes under. 10 divided by 20 comes out to one half. And so every time the United States makes one car, they, in that same amount of time, they could have made half a TV. Because half a TV is smaller than three TVs, the United States has the comparative advantage in producing televisions. If these countries are going to trade and specialize based on their comparative advantage, then the U.S. is going to be making cars, and that means that Canada has to be making TVs. Now let's look at an output problem. For an output problem, we're looking at two countries given the same amount of resources and how much they can make in, let's say, one day for this. So the United States, given the same resources as Japan, one day of work, they can make five phones or 20 computers, whereas Japan can make 15 phones or 10 computers. If it's an output problem, and chances are it will be an output problem because that's what shows up the most often on the AP test, then you're looking for, for your absolute advantage, you're looking for the country that can make the most. So, four phones. The USA can make five phones, Japan can make 15. Japan has the absolute advantage in producing phones. The US then has the absolute advantage in producing computers because 20 is greater than 10. Now let's get our comparative advantage. To find a comparative advantage in an output problem, you take the other number and put it over. So, to find out the opportunity cost of making one phone in the United States, we take the 20 computers, put it over, and that comes out to four computers. Every time the U.S. makes one phone, they have to stop making or they give up four computers. That's their opportunity cost. For Japan, it's 10 over 15, and that comes out to two-thirds. Every time Japan makes one phone, they give up two-thirds of a computer. So Japan has a comparative advantage in producing the phones. So if they're going to trade, I'm just going to put this right here so I can keep track of it. If they're going to trade, Japan must be making phones, and that means the USA is going to be making computers. Let's take a look at the comparative advantage on the other side, though. 5 over 20, because it's an output problem, and that comes out to one-fourth of a phone. And 15 over 10 comes out into one and a half phones. So the US obviously has the comparative advantage in producing the computers because a quarter of a phone is smaller than one and a half phones. So now let's look at the trade. Would Japan agree to trade one phone for two computers? Every time Japan gives up one phone domestically, they get back only two thirds of a computer. So I think they'd be happy, or they would be happy, to trade away one phone for two computers internationally. Domestically, when the U.S. wants to get one phone, they have to give up four computers. That's their opportunity cost. So they would be much more happy to trade away two computers for one phone across borders with Japan. So that was Unit 1. That's a quick little review. Join me again next time when we talk about the next couple of units. Goodbye.